One day, our microwave just stopped heating food. Turns out it was due to a bad magnetron. We performed a side-by-side -side conductivity test with a multimeter on the old magnetron and the replacement. The test between the two terminals was good. However, when we tested the terminal to the housing, we should see OL for open load, which indicates no electrical conductivity. Unfortunately, that was not the case. Turns out there was some electrical connection between the terminals and the housing. Another sign something was wrong was the noise coming from the microwave. In the rest of the video, we will be replacing the magnetron in an over-the-range Whirlpool convection microwave. We'll start by protecting the surfaces below with a packing blanket, then placing a step stool beneath to help lower the microwave. These over-the-range microwaves mount to the wall with some brackets. Just have to pull up on the back to free it. Next, the unscrewing. There's about three different sizes of screws. Even with proper screw organization, we ended up having a couple loose screws wandering off. Opening up the bottom, we can see a couple of connections. This wire powers the turntable motor and the hood light. We are removing this piece so we can eventually remove the outer metal case. After flipping the microwave back upright, we need to remove this exhaust vent before we can strip the metal case off. This microwave is currently set up to recirculate the air so we didn't have to worry about any ducting. This last screw was hiding in the vent. And you guessed it, more screws. Okay, we did enough screwing off, now we can strip this microwave and see what's inside. Though not plugged in, this microwave may not be safe. This little part right next to the magnetron is the capacitor, which can store a deadly amount of volts. A quick way to discharge it is to take a screwdriver with a plastic or rubber handle and bridge the leads of the capacitor. Although most new microwaves use capacitors with bleed resistors that discharge the capacitor, these resistors can fail, so better to not take any chances. On to removing any connections and screws from the magnetron, and taking note on how everything is connected. Everything needs to go back exactly where it came. Once we loosen these last four screws directly above the magnetron, we should be able to remove it. At this point, we tested the old magnetron, which we already showed at the beginning of the video. I suppose we could have performed this test while it was still in the microwave, but for visibility, we opted to take it out prior to testing. On to installing the replacement part, starting with those four screws at the top. Also making sure to connect everything back to their original location. As far as disposing of the old magnetron, if you are in a larger city or town, there's likely a local company nearby that will scrap it, or an organization that recycles electronics and small appliances. Do not attempt to bust up the old magnetron. There may be beryllium oxide in the ceramic insulators, and when inhaled, this substance can be harmful. However, most newer microwave magnetrons use aluminum oxide, though I wouldn't go around huffing this stuff either. After hooking everything back up, it was time to give it a quick test. We took this opportunity to check to see if the cooling fan was blowing. And yes, this is dangerous, though not because of microwave radiation exposure, which is non-ionizing and non-cancerous, but because the microwave transformer is exposed, which can lead to electrocution if you are not careful. After unplugging the microwave, the transformer should no longer be a danger, and we can continue on with the reassembly. I guess this is as good a time as ever for a disclaimer. For those of you who are on the edge of finding out what the theory of Darwinism means, go ahead and hire a professional. There are certain parts like the capacitor and the transformer that if handled incorrectly can be detrimental to your health and well-being. The microwave is arguably one of the most dangerous appliances in your house to repair. Also, another thing to note, these magnetrons aren't the cheapest. So depending on the microwave, it may be more economical and easier to just buy a new microwave. For us, this microwave is on the more expensive side. The magnetron was about one-fifth the cost of this microwave at the time we did the replacement. Depending on the issue with the magnetron, it may be possible to repair the device. However, that process is a little more technical. We obviously opted to just replace the entire part.
With everything buttoned up, time to give it the old water test. Obviously, I could have just touched the water, but I wanted to show the camera I wasn't acting. If you found this video insightful or entertaining, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel.